The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Monday morning, 60 minutes to go until the opening bell. Big week of earnings this week. We have a Fed meeting beginning tomorrow, press conference on Wednesday. No decision expected in terms of a change of any kind, but it'll be interesting to see what Fed Chairman Powell has to say at that press conference fielding questions. Starting off the markets, s and is positive by more than 1% right now. You have the s and is up about 32 points, trading at 28. 862. NASDAQ up 117 points, trading at 88.87. The Dow up 270 at 23,926. Oil, if you thought that we were out of the woods in terms of volatility last week, if you thought we had gained some stability towards the end of last week, you may have been correct towards the end of last week. That does not apply to this week as crude futures dropping from almost $18 Last night, let's find where we opened last night. Yeah, last night, this is your open, 6 p.m. Eastern time. I thought, I was like, is it, was it really almost at 17? It sure was, folks. 17, we're now hitting session lows with a 12 handle on the price of crude at 12.95. Quite a fall off to back things up for some context on an hourly. There's your drop off last week on Tuesday to 665. And that's what I said, you know, even since that spike low, it had been a nice steady incline. If you look at Thursday and Friday, we had a nice trading range between 16 and 18 dollars in the price of crude remarkable that you would call that a quote-unquote nice trading range as in terms of talking about finding a bid but guess what folks this week not so much look at crude dropping out of bed right now as we speak putting it back on a 15 minute i mean when i was coming on the air getting ready for this 745 i mean Hour alone, you start at 7.30, we were trading at $14.17. We've dropped almost $1.50 in the last hour in the price of crude, $12.81. Gold con contract, third excuse me, 17.37, up about a buck 40. Silver up about seven pennies so far today, trading at 15.33. Start things off, let's jump over to the charts. We'll start it off with the Dow, 23,916. You see Friday's action, quite a strong closeout to the action on Friday. You see where we opened the futures last night. There's your gap, 6 p.m. We opened at about 23,600. You get the Dow now above 23,900, 23,908. NASDAQ 100 trading at 88.70 week. As I mentioned, big week of earnings this week. S&P, I believe it's almost uh, 140 companies maybe reporting earnings. We'll jump over to some of the biggest this week, some of those FANG stocks in particular. You got Google, Microsoft, Apple, lots of action this week on earnings, let alone a Fed meeting, let alone the COVID-19 pandemic and how that's hitting. We'll talk about New York potentially looking at opening up as they look to have passed the peak of their curve and hopefully have seen the worst and are on to better days. S&P 500, 28.59. You zoom into where we were. AM. We got up to this level. We've been bouncing around between about 2860, call it, and the low there was about 2843, right near the pre market session highs at 2859. We talked about crude. Every, every time we go back to this chart, it's losing 10 or 20 cents. Crude now 1265. Euro US dollar back above 108. The euro trading at 108.50. And gold contract 735 excuse me, 1735 in the price of gold. You see the drop off on Friday. We traded from 1760 down to 1730. Last night, there's your futures open at about 1740 and we're just $5 off that level in the price of gold trading 1735. As I mentioned it, headlines you're starting to see out here. Um, states getting back to business. Cuomo announces phased plan to reopen New York as their deaths drop, so new fatalities Dropped to 367, the lowest since March 31st. I mean, staggering numbers when when you, you see reports out there that say that 367 people died. And, and that is a huge indication of things getting better. But that is the truth. So you have uh, the governor's briefing. 
Sharp contrast to the death of the outbreak in New York on April 9th, you had almost 800 people dying. Total, total fatalities now, 16,966 for New York. Uh, May 15th, New York will be looking for their phased reopening that could start May 15th, probably upstate before the New York City area. And they would begin with construction, I believe, and manufacturing. Yes, would be the first to reopen on that. Other news just hitting the press, General Motors, they're suspending their dividend stock buybacks to preserve cash. I'm surprised you don't see this a little more often. That story just coming online in about the last half hour. GM shares, there's a little volatility for you. We spike up to 22.40, we're down to 21.40. Um, folks, if you're an owner in a company right now and they want to, you know, make sure that they're cash, um, cash rich, not even cash rich, right? Just cash able to support what they need. I would have no problem being a shareholder in almost any company right now if they said, hey, instead of us issuing dividends, we're gonna make sure that we pad our coffers to make sure we make it through this, turn the corner, get over this slowdown so that when we come out of it, we have money, we're not riddled with debt, we're not in a weak position, we're in a strong position when this economy charges back. So GM though, volatility 2145 right now for GM. So I mentioned the earnings, we'll get into it right away. Why not? We got a bunch of articles here because there's so many companies to keep track of. Uh, here's where we're gonna start. There's a nice graphic up there from CNBC. There's your action. So we got NXP Semiconductor today. On Tuesday, you're talking Pepsi, Caterpillar, 3M, Starbucks, Merck, Pfizer, Alphabet, AMD. Wednesday, GE, Facebook, Microsoft. How about Thursday? Amazon, Apple, Kraft Heinz, Gilead. They've been in the press a lot in terms of their COVID-19. Um, treatment or vaccine. And then Friday, you closed out with Estee Lauder, Honeywell, Colgate, Palmolive, and the Clorox company. All of those companies uh, expected with their earnings. I mean, huge, right? Look at the FANG stocks alone. Facebook, Microsoft, Google, Apple, Amazon. Huge. Uh, so to check into some of those numbers, we'll jump around. NXP you're getting today, first quarter earnings after the market closes. Automotive and mobile chips producer will hold a conference call Tuesday morning. So tomorrow morning, they come out with them tonight, conference call tomorrow morning. They're looking for $2 billion. They're looking for $1.41 a share. Jumping around to some of the stocks, uh, the tech stocks. There's your NXP. So we closed out. This is a 15-minute. No real action this morning on that stock. But you look at... Uh, I believe it was Intel out with their numbers last week. You see the pop down to 55.26, right? But that action out on Friday, you claw back almost all of the losses. That was like an 8% loss on Intel opening the day. Uh, excuse me, the last, they traded down Thursday night. They come out with their earnings by Friday, end of the day. You're back above 59. And you're going to open in the positive today for Intel. AMD was reacting in a similar fashion, as in you traded down on the Intel numbers, closed out Friday action actually above where you closed out Thursday. And AMD going to open higher at 57.43 as the chip sector comes roaring back. As we wrap up the first segment, checking out the VIX. As this market charges higher, 35.36 right now for the VIX. A little bit of longer time context, zoom in on where we've been. We're now below the lows that we were at on April 14th. I believe this is a bad tick here on the 24th. Nonetheless, we're back to where we were March 5th. Folks, that's almost two months. We're going to have a two-month low almost on the VIX uh, as we open up to March 5th or early March slash late February territory in the 30s. Stay tuned, folks. We'll go back to what else we have on tap. Earnings week, Fed week, markets in positive territory. If you're we'll in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profit in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, Please contact Direction Shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Checking in on the 10-year yield, 0.63% this morning as the yield inches up a bit as the market looks to turn the corner from the COVID-19 epine COVID epidemic. I'll get there. Uh, checking back in on the stories of the day. So what we have going on, stocks making moves. Auto Nation, they're going to return $77 million. You hear that? $77 million it received in forgivable loans from the Paycheck Protection Program. Folks, Auto Nation. That's a $3 billion company, not what was intended. I'm sure maybe you saw many of the stories. Um, public companies out here taking $855 million. There you go, 200 public companies, $854 million. That includes $126 million for three public companies affiliated with one Texas hotel guy, Monty Bennett. Um, Hopefully they repair that because that's not what that was intended for. Getting back into the earnings before we jump to stocks, though, uh, Boeing this week, Adidas this week as well. Lots of action. It, that's why I was jumping around to a number of different articles. So Tesla, they're going to report Wednesday, April 29th. And uh, where were we to? We had Boeing, I believe. There you go. Boeing is Wednesday as well, the 29th. We cover the chip stocks. You have AMD. They're going to report on Wednesday, the 29th as well. Facebook, Wednesday, the 29th. Twitter out the 30th. McDonald's out the 30th. Starbucks out Tuesday, April 28th. Uh, just action across the board. Getting into the other companies out with numbers, Tuesday. So Pepsi, they're looking for 13.2 billion projected earnings per share at $1.03. Pepsi shares over the life of this market, I mean, quite a pop, right? From where you were on Thursday to Friday, 135 up from about 130. For some context though, quite a fall off from 147 down to 101 up to 134 so far. We talked about McDonald's, gonna be coming out with their numbers. You see the action there from almost 220 down to 124. McDonald's opening a bit higher at 185. We're getting Starbucks earnings this week as well, Starbucks. Starbucks getting hit earlier than most companies because of their dramatic presence in China. 
China. You see kind of the fall off there beginning January 23rd from 93 down to 85. You get a bit of a reprieve, I think, when China begins to look like they were getting better. And then as the market falls apart in the US, you go from $90 down to 50. We're going to open today at about 76.45 for Starbucks shares. Caterpillar, they're going to be out before the open tomorrow. Projected revenue, 11 billion, earnings per share, a buck 69. Caterpillar shares during the extent of this from 150 to 87 to 114 and Caterpillar actually going to open lower this morning. You're trading to 112 from 114. So something going on with Caterpillar in the face of the market being up 1% Caterpillar shares lower so far this morning. Let's jump back to stocks making moves. So Boeing, they pulled out of the deal to pay 4.2 billion for an 80% stake in the commercial jet business, Brazil's Embraer, maybe. Boeing said the two sides failed to agree on final terms by a deadline, but that company accused Boeing of wrongfully terminating the deal. They'll battle that out in court. Deutsche Bank reportedly reported a preliminary first quarter profit, surprising an analyst who had been predicting a loss. Deutsche Bank said it might miss its capital requirement targets due to extending more credit in light of the coronavirus outbreak, as well as a jump in loan defaults. Deutsche Bank, DB, I believe. Yeah, check out that pop from six up to about 650, up almost 10% on their numbers. But Deutsch been in trouble for a while. So Caterpillar, they got a downgrade. That's the reason why. Underweight from equal weight at Morgan Stanley. Checkpoint Software, the cybersecurity company, reported adjusted quarterly earnings $1.42 a share, four cents above estimates. Revenue also beating Wall Street forecast. The company's results boosted by increasing demand for network security as more people work from home. Where were we? We just jump around. There we go. Checkpoint. That shares this morning. See. HKP, you're talking about up about 3% on their numbers to 107.60 for Checkpoint. Other action, I saw I had skipped it. So Diamond Offshore, they are filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection after saying demand in its drilling services had dropped precipitously amid the significant drop in oil demand. Diamond Offshore is 53% owned by Lowe's. Diamond Offshore get out of there you see the drop off we're going to be trading at about 36 cents from almost 93 do is their symbol quite the drop folks um be very careful being in anything in oil right now outside of maybe the strongest of the strong that you know they are going to survive as in exxon mobile is going to be around um, as long as oil's around chevron might be around as long as oil's around but from a dollar to 26 to 36 as we're checking them out exxon mobile shares I mean, you see the action here, right? Maybe it's found a bottom because even with crude collapsing again this morning, you don't really have too big of an impact on there. This is a weekly. You go from 70 to 30. We've kind of settled back at 43 on the Exxon Mobil. Other stories out there, Adidas, they're coming out saying they're going to see a 40% decline in sales for the second quarter. Adidas on Monday reported a 19% decline in net sales for the first quarter from a year before to $5.16 billion. As 70% of its stores worldwide closed as a result, looking ahead to the second quarter, the company said it expects both top and bottom line declines in the second quarter of 2020 are currently expected to be more pronounced than those recorded in the first quarter. Doesn't seem to be too surprising, right? We covered that all these public companies, in terms of how much money was being drawn out of there, $855 million by public companies. Hopefully that gets repaired. And jumping back to other equities with action so far, Tesla, they're in the news. They had asked dozens of workers to return to work at its Fremont, California plant on Wednesday, according to internal memo, memos seen by CNBC. That comes even though health orders related to the COVID-19 outbreak have not yet been changed or relaxed. I wonder how that plays out, right? I'm pretty sure that when they're shut down like that, they're shut down. I'm not sure if that qualifies as essential. We'll see that play out. Wayfair, they got downgraded to a hold from a buy citing valuation for the online home goods seller shares. Wayfair shares dipped as low as 2170 on March 19th. Check this out, folks. 2170 on March 19th before surging and closing Friday at 122. Wayfair shares are going to be trading down about 1%. They are W, quite the symbol they snagged there. Wayfair, yeah, there's, there's, there's your action in terms of falling out of bed. We get earnings. 
the week of February 24th. You reached the low of 2170 on March 16th, but I believe they released material data around that time that said that their sales were just through the roof. You trade from 21, maybe this was your gap when really they said that things were just going way better than they even thought. From 50 to 70, this is a daily we're talking about, so you get that gap up to 70, and we haven't stopped trading higher to 122.41, and even with the downgrade, you got a bid ask of about 119 by 120, so we're gonna give back maybe $2 of that, but look at the action on Friday alone, 105 to 123. Checking back in on oil, see where we are for the commodities, as this trades with some big time volatility this morning. Uh, these are 15 minute bars. As I mentioned from 730, you were trading at 1415. You're down to about 1288 right now. The low 1258 on the price of crude. Other stories out there before we wrap it up. Beyond Meat, they got a downgrade in the plant-based burgers make, maker stock to sell from neutral, noting the stock's 142% jump from its March low. The rebound does not price in the impact of economic risks related to COVID-19. Yeah, there's gonna be some meat processing plants shut down, folks, but I don't know if that's gonna translate to everybody all of a sudden eating Beyond Meat as it's doubled in price. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the program. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as the number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stock Stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information.
Welcome back, folks. S&P's up about 26 points. NASDAQ up 100. You got the Dow up 211. Pretty tame market since we've been on the air since 830. I'm going to jump over to Microsoft in a moment. Microsoft trading up about $2 at 176.80. So I'm not sure if you saw it. But we had the NFL draft starting Thursday night, and you may have seen it because they had record numbers here. The number is pretty staggering in terms of 15.6 million viewers tuning in Thursday night. Thursday night, the biggest night of them all, round one of the NFL throughout the ESPN, ABC, NFL Network, ESPN Deportes, and digital channels, shattering the previous record of 12.4 million. There's been no sports for a month. Friends and I talking about you got one glimpse of live sports in terms of the NFL draft, and then it was back to kind of reruns. They have the, the Jordan documentary, The Last Dance, going on on ESPN. If you haven't checked that out, check it out. I caught a little bit of it last night. Pretty cool there. I'm going to watch all of those. I got them getting DVR'd so I can watch them when I like. But big numbers on the NFL, and what I found really cool in here is that Things really did go well. It looked pretty seamless. You have so many different teams, right? Imagine you have all the teams. You have a GM. You have a coach. You have the players getting drafted. You have the analysts for ESPN, the the procedural gymnastics they had to do. And guess who was the technology behind it? Microsoft Teams served as the primary line of communication between the NFL and its franchisees, as well as how official picks were submitted to the league. Some teams chose to also use the Microsoft technology for their virtual war rooms. A credit to them and Microsoft trading higher, maybe on the heels of that. Uh, quite a performance and you see what they can do. If they can do that, they can do just about anything remotely, folks. And as we talk about online, how about an online class taking place Thursday with Tom, my dad. He'll be in there, full day class, timing the trade seminar all day from 9 a.m. till 4 p.m. You get a copy of his book. You also get instant access, a month-long membership to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. I encourage you to sign up for that. Check it out, $395. You'll get Market Insights for the week. We'll get the book out there, and you'll get six hours of education from 9 till noon, from 1 till 4, all of that archive. Check it out on the front page of TFNN. Stay tuned, folks. Larry Pesavento, live at 9 o'clock. I'll be back at 10 o'clock with Tom, live programming all Monday at TFNN. Big earnings.